Good day. Um, I want to speak about something that I think we all face to a lesser or a greater degree. And that is that we are not the leaders in a category of products and services, but we are one of the smaller followers because any category can only really have one leader. Um, and the implications of that now we know from historical research that it of, it's often indicative that the lagging, what I would term brands, in other words, the smaller brands in a category, are largely less profitable than the largest brand or the major brand. When there is an economic downturn, it also seems as though in most markets, consumers tend to stick with the leaders uh, and in part, I believe it's because of the fact that um, they don't want to risk uh, and their risk, um, you know, uh, profile uh, increases. Um, and for that reason, they'd rather choose what they know than to experiment with what they don't know. Now, the logical thing that most smaller brands do is to cut price um, and forget the fact that... Um, the difficulty with that is that if you are a smaller brand, it is extremely easy for the brand leader to undermine you entirely by matching your price. Um, so it can at best be a short term promotional strategy. It cannot be a sustainable strategy that will keep your brand um, a leader going forward. So my view has always been try and work at differentiation as much as you can in a downturn. And if at all you can, spend money on marketing. Because, again, we've got a lot of indications that money spent on marketing in a downturn by a lagging or smaller brand tends to help them when the upturn arrives. In other words, it accelerates once the upturn arrives. And in the upturn, your brand is likely to retain and gain more than it had prior to the downturn. So there is a lot of common sense and logic as well as research data that says it is the time to invest, even if it's counterintuitive to many businesses to do so. And even often if it's fairly unaffordable to do so. The most important thing is to work a differentiation. Now, you can do that in one of many ways, um, and that is increasing as we speak today. You can do that by focusing on a specific segment of the market. Rolex is not targeted at the whole market of watches. It's targeted at a particular segment of the market. The same applies to Spotify. It's not really targeted at the entire market. You've got far more specialized classical music channels in Europe and other places that tend to capture a different audience from Spotify. They must have Spotify, but they tend to listen to the more specialized areas um, more often. Um, so differentiation is key, and, and that can be by adding value. In other words, doing something that adds more value to your brand rather than simply reducing the price thereof. In other words, adding a certain percentage of volume beyond what you had before adding a promotional item with it, um, giving people, you know, after a series of purchases, um, a gift to go with it, um, but that matches the category and matches the product. Um, it can be many like that. Um, but differentiation is absolutely key because if you can differentiate, again, that will be sustainable beyond the economic decline and you will be able to retain that beyond that and it will give your brand a far greater opportunity to grow beyond the downturn. The thing that the two things that you must not do, the one I've already mentioned is just to carry on discounting because all you really do is you create a sentiment amongst consumers if I wait long enough that brand will go on promotion. And guys, that's a very dangerous thing because then you have very high spikes in promotional periods and um, for a period of time, nothing actually happens uh, because people have full cupboards and then all of a sudden they need the item and they wait for the next promotion to happen. Or one of your competitors 
simply do you know does the same and you're in the same spot um, the other issue is to stop advertising and marketing me too in other words there is no point if the leading detergent is seen as the strongest detergent in the market for you to try and make the same claim uh, because if you need this if you want to and can make the same claim then you need a disproportionate amount of research evidence consumer evidence to prove that your product or brand is better than the competitors. In competitive advertising markets, if you can do that, that is a brilliant strategy, if you're able to do it. Many markets do not allow competitive advertising, and I don't understand why not, because when used right, it is effective. But then you must be able to prove that you can deliver the same results at potentially a lower price, or even better results at the same price, because Frankly, then there would be no point in discounting your product. Um, again, I, I was absent for a while, um, so hopefully we will speed up again and have more little videos. But I just find that the issue of what to do in a downturn and how to strengthen a, a lagging brand or a smaller brand in a downturn is far more problematic for your smaller marketers and smaller companies than to retain a leading brand. Because to be honest, unless something quite dramatic happens, a leading brand generally wins and comes out pretty successful at the end of it. Um, lagging brands, unfortunately, do not. And in a downturn, you often find that some lagging, lagging brands fall out of the market entirely and basically uh, become um, obsolete, um, which obviously is the last thing you want. So focus is a key issue and decide what to do and how to make it work. If you want to speak about this further, you've got my contact details. I'd love to and all the best and have a good week. Cheers.